In the previous modules, we looked at t-tests and z-tests as ways to perform simple experiments and make inferences about populations. Our z-test needed the most information about the population. To perform a z-test, we needed to know not only the population mean before treatment, but also a population standard deviation or variance. Our t-test removed the need to know the population variance when we performed a single sample experiment. It also removed the need to know a population mean before treatment when we did a pre and post design or a two group design. But there's many other ways we can measure the world and we'll need inferential methods that allow us to make those inferences about the populations. What we'll be doing in this module and the upcoming modules is looking at mathematical models that allow us to tackle these other types of designs. That is repeated measures designs when we have multiple measurements for a person over time or over different conditions multi-group designs when we have multiple different groups or conditions that people are in, or even continuous predictor designs, designs in which our predictor, that is a thing that we're actually predicting from, is quantitative rather than some type of group measurement. Now all of these different models will require a mathematical description of our actual data, which gets us into the domain of mathematical models. In this upcoming module, we'll have a lot of mathematical descriptions of our data, but remember that we're simply designing these models as a way to make an inference about a population. So all that we're doing with our modeling is a way to describe what we have observed to make an inference about what we haven't observed. So all of our mathematical modeling is really in the service of making an inference about a population. Now in general, mathematical models allow us to extend our descriptions of nature to situations with more than two groups, or even predictions that are based on quantitative variables. We also are intending our models to be parsimonious descriptions of effects and relationships. That is, we don't want them to be any more complicated than necessary to make the inferences we want to make. Now this is an important point to pause on. We can always develop a mathematical model that is more accurate, that is, makes more specific and precise predictions, but we often do so at the cost of parsimony. So there'll be a balance in the models we design. That is, we're gonna make our models to be good descriptions of the world with some air that we accept. That is, we know our models will not be a perfect representation of what's happening in the population, but they can still be useful despite the fact that there's some air. Finally, mathematical models can be functional or statistical models. That is, functional models can describe an actual relationship. I'll give you some examples of these in just a second or statistical relationships. Now statistical relationships is what we'll deal with most, and we'll see that the main distinction will be that statistical models actually include a parameter or a function for error. That is, we accept our model will not be a perfect prediction of what will be happening in the population, and so we work in that error into our model explicitly. Let's start with functional relationships, because this is a nice way to ease into mathematical modeling. So let's talk about some situations where we can actually model a functional relationship between variables. And by functional relationship, I simply mean the actual relationship that yields whatever observations we observe. Let's start with the price of doing laundry. I think we've all experienced this going into our laundromat or into the laundry facilities at our apartments. And we all know that we spend different amounts on different days that we do laundry. Now we can understand the functional relationship between these events going and doing laundry and the price we actually pay. Suppose we go and measure 100 randomly selected individuals who are leaving a laundromat or leaving their apartment laundry facilities. We get different observations, that is, there is variability in the observations we make, but we can probably very easily explain the functional relationship between what these individuals are doing and the price they're actually paying. Let me lay this out slightly differently. Right now I have loads of laundry on the x-axis, and we can actually see that we have four dots here. Now these four dots actually represent all those individuals we measured. It just turns out that people are perfectly explained, that is their location in terms of cost on the Y, on the basis of the number of loads of laundry they do. That is, we know the functional relationship between the cost of doing laundry and some explanatory predictor. The number of loads of laundry that a person does perfectly explains the cost they end up spending, barring any coin stuck in the laundry machine or perhaps buying detergent. So let's actually lay out this functional relationship between loads of laundry and cost and look at some of the model terms we'll be using. Let's imagine we're trying to understand an individual's score on the outcome measure. In this case, it's the cost of doing laundry. Now what we're going to do with our mathematical model is set that equal to some function, that is some function of something we have observed. We're going to start with some overall constant and you'll see how we're going to work this into our model. 
And then we're going to add to that some effect of something we measured. Now this is a general way of laying out a mathematical model. In this case, it's a linear model. And by linear, I mean we're simply adding up things on the right-hand side of the equation to equal what we're observing on the left-hand side. Now in the case of doing laundry, let me recouch this in terms of the price of doing laundry is equal to zero, the baseline for going to your laundromat, there's no cover charge, plus, in this case, $2 for every load of laundry you do. This is probably the sum of the washing and the drying, assuming that people are washing and drying every load that they run. So if we go back, this perfectly explains the relationship that we have observed. The price of doing laundry for any of these people is simply that functional relationship. Take the number of loads of laundry they did and multiply it by two, and you know the price of doing laundry. Now this is a very trivial and simple example, but we just formed a mathematical model to explain cost on the basis of loads of laundry. Let's try a slightly different example. This time, let's try to explain how much people pay during Halloween at a downtown club. Now let me tell you about this club. This is a club that, like most clubs on Halloween, charges a pretty exorbitant cover charge. This is also a club that, in their own interest, is going to charge a fixed price for every drink. So no matter what you're purchasing, it's the same cost. So let's look at the observations we would get if we took 100 randomly selected individuals. Notice that individuals do vary in terms of the amount that they're spending in that night. And our interest with our mathematical model, like all mathematical models, is we want to explain this variability. Why are people differing in the amount of dollars they spent? Now you might have guessed that we can explain this variability, the variability in cost, in terms of something like number of drinks. Here I have from one to six drinks, that was the range we actually observed, the individuals and how much they spent. Let me spread these points out again so we can see all the different individuals, and you can see that all the people who bought one drink spent the same amount, and all the people who bought six drinks spent more, but within the six drink category spent the same. So let's explain these data on the basis of a mathematical model. In this case, the price of your Halloween night at that club would be $60, and that's the cover charge here, plus $13 for each drink consumed. So not a very cheap night. But notice that this mathematical model will perfectly explain that relationship. We can explain perfectly the differences between people in terms of how much they spent on the basis of this explanatory variable, the number of drinks they actually purchased. So again, all our mathematical models are intending to do is describe the differences among people in the y variable, our response, in terms of something on the x. And with functional relationships, we're able to do this perfectly because we know something about the function that actually relates the variables on the right-hand side to the actual observations we make on the left-hand side.